Hi there. I didn't see you there. Well, today, I'm going to tell you a story about my life. Chapter 1. An injured lion still wants to roar. I've been called many different things in my life. Some bad, some good. But the more I heard these names, the more I realized the one that really stuck to me, the one that emphasized my personality, and it's actually perfect for this assignment. Randy Potch compares himself to a lion in his last lecture. If I were to metaphorically compare myself to something, it would be little, because I've never been little, I've never been tiny, and I wasn't ever weak. People call me this because when I was born, I was 9 pounds and 24 inches long. And I didn't stop there. I actually kept on growing. And when I was three and a half, I was already like the same height as my brother. And I already knew how to ride a scooter. Um, once I hit five, my parents immediately got me in the sports and put me in the basketball. I was always known for my speed and being stronger than I look. And of course being tall. I was always the opposite and I got really good at any sport you put me in, even if I barely knew the sport. It all started when I was a baby. Uh, I lived with my grandma and grandpa in Orange County. I lived with them for a while until my parents got a place to live and I moved with them in this little neighborhood uh, with my three cousins and my uh, grandma and aunt. Later, I, I still continued playing sports at this time. Uh, a little later though, my parents decided to move to Arizona. It was extremely hot there and it was completely different from California. And the people were, oh, so much different. Uh, I didn't really know anybody at this school. And the only people I knew at Arizona were my two cousins and my aunt. Um, but luckily my brother went to the same school as me and helped me make friends. I actually met some really cool people there. And yeah, it was cool for a while, but then my parents decided to move back to California. And I ended up going to this Catholic school called St. Polycarp. I didn't really know anybody at the school and I was pretty awkward because of this. And after a while, I kind of grew out my shell and made some pretty cool friends, but the school sucked. You had to wear these uniforms, your hair had to be a certain length, but I didn't really let it bother me. But a little later, I ended up moving to schools again. And at this time, I kind of gave up and just didn't really want to make friends anymore. So for a while, I didn't have friends and I was extremely shy. But luckily, I did make friends and I'm actually friends with him still to this day. And I'm glad for that. And a little later, I ended up going to junior high. I was still pretty shy in junior high. Like if you knew me from that time, I was, I wouldn't talk at all. Um, a little later, I got back in the sports and I played, what's it called? I played football and track. And I fell in love with him again. But a little later, I hit my freshman year. And I decided to not continue playing track or basketball. And I just stuck with football. Uh, I really cherished it. And it was fun. And I wanted to really focus on football. And see if I could like, potentially make myself better. And hopefully I make varsity next year and I continue to better myself and hopefully this is possible chapter 4 the parents lottery in my life there's always been two people that have guided me in life one was my mom and one was my brother uh, my dad was there for me in the beginning but uh, kind of drifted away as I got older and he's like a tough angry man who I don't know he's just really angry all the time he's kind of why I had anger issues when I was younger um as for my mom she was always there for me pretty much through everything no matter what it was uh 
and even when I was a troublemaker. And I love her for that. She is definitely where I got my personality and has taught me never to give up on what I want and to ignore all the negativity in, like, your life and to think how you are, like, luckier than other people. Um, she's also, like, really caring and would do anything for um, her three kids and has always been there for us. My brother um, has, like, more been a father figure than my dad. So for my parents' lottery, it would have to be my mom and my brother. Um, he's always been there. He's really tough on me, but, like, in a good way. He's got me through a lot of sports and has pushed me, like, a lot. But even though I don't see him as much as I used to, He's still always been like that. He's still like a father figure, and I still care for him and love him. As for my mom, she's really positive, and she tries to never think of things in a negative way, and it's perfect, and I love my family, and I love both of them. Chapter 7, I never made it to the NFL. Often you have dreams and goals from your childhood, just like Randy, I wanted to make it to the NFL, but I might never accomplish this goal, and if I don't, then I could still look back to the people that pushed me the most to reach uh, these goals, and taught me important life lessons that I've learned from playing football and other sports. Ever since I was young, my brother was always a pusher in my life, and my dad actually got us into boxing and had a spar against each other, which was really difficult because my brother weighed more and was older. He had an age advantage. My brother, uh, he would expect me to do great even if I were to win a basketball game or come first in high jumps or hurdles or get a sack in football. He always thought it wasn't enough and would even work at it with me and run multiple miles with me and try to beat me and sometimes did and it pushed me a lot. I competed against friends a lot in sports. In my opinion, the best workouts happen like when you try to surpass somebody. You're competing against uh, somebody uh, constantly working to make yourself better. And yeah. Chapter 11, the happiest place on earth. There's always been some type of struggle in my life, but I've always been able to overcome like these obstacles for the most of the part. I actually had to face a lot of brick walls and some almost felt like made me want to give up, especially when I was down and felt broken. But luckily I didn't give up. I didn't just plop on the ground and I found a solution to overcome these obstacles and grow stronger from it. One brick wall was I was really depressed when I was younger, which uh, was because I lost a lot of family like my family kind of disowned me and uh, I lost a lot of friends too Um, I didn't really want to go to school but I kind of like overcame it and just played a lot of sports and just talked about my problems and uh, made friends that had the same problems as me and yeah Chapter 21, J. All of us have people in the world that we are close to, and of course, no relationship or friendship is perfect. We face many trials in life, and oftentimes in your life, relationships or friendships with other people uh, that can get you through rough times. And uh, for me, that would be uh, my best friend, which is uh, Riley. Yeah, and he's always been there for me for uh, thick and thin. Uh, good times and bad times and I couldn't wish for a better friend yeah chapter 28 dream big there's always been adults in my life 
at times that have been too protective over me and wouldn't let me do things that were just plain fun or weren't really a big deal. Starting with dress code, I don't quite understand why we can't have ripped jeans or tank tops. What if you only have ripped jeans? Or what if it's really high outside? Do you want me to die? Just playing around. Anyways, uh, I don't really have a problem with my parents. They've always been uh, understanding the things I want to do. Except for my mom. She asks a lot of questions before she lets me do something. But besides that, it's a stress code, man. Like, why can't I wear a tank top? What if I want to show off my muscles? I'm just playing around. But other than that, yeah, I don't really have any problems. Chapter 53, Never Give Up. Often in our lives, it is hard to accomplish your goals or dreams. And some we easily accomplish, but the ones that are a struggle to accomplish and you might not accomplish are the real ones. Uh, for me, it's my permit. And I'm currently trying to get it, actually. When it was literally nothing but like a struggle. I hit so many brick walls. I actually started once I got there. First, we ended up like signing an appointment and the appointment didn't go. And I had to re-sign. I had to get more papers. I had to do all these tests. Oh, it was horrible. But pretty much that's one of the only hard, difficult things right now. And yeah. Chapter 56, make a decision, Tigo or Eeyore. Life at times can be difficult, most people, and it is definitely difficult to me, and I'm either a Tigger or a Eeyore. I tend to either be a solid Eeyore or a Tigger, but sometimes that depends on what's happening in my life, and I usually look over the negativity, and I find a way or reason to be happy. In other words, it depends on like, when and where, more than me just being one of these, like, personas i've never really been a negative guy i've actually usually been the guy that like cheer people up and um usually think of people like before myself that's usually my problem i try making other people happy before my own happiness and the other person usually thinks it's nothing and there's a lot making me sad or a lot of things bothering me and after that i kind of what makes me into it you if i were to um, but besides that, I would honestly say I'm a tigger. I'm always happy. I think of the positivity in life. And, uh, when I'm sad, I don't let it get to me. And yeah. Okay, here. Come on. One more. Give me yeah. one more. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, anyways, that was, uh, my last lecture video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it.